Hi guys, this is Roman, and today I am going to be presenting some thoughts on game theory. Um, in the spirit of all the probability that we've been doing, um, I'll present something called Prisoner's Dilemma and discuss how we make choices in our lives and how we can use math uh, to make those choices. So for Prisoner's Dilemma, let's give a situation that the police arrest you and your friend for robbing a bank. Both of you are being held in separate cells, and the police only have enough evidence to charge you guys with trespassing. Um, they need a confession to charge you with the crime of bank robbery, uh, but you're not allowed to communicate, and uh, you are in separate rooms. So here are the outcomes for you guys. If you both confess, each of you guys are going to have two years in prison each. If you confess and uh, your friend does not, you get to go home zero years, your friend is going to spend 10 years in prison. If the opposite happens, so if your friend confesses but you don't, you're going to be spending 10 years in prison and he'll get to go home. Um, and then if both of you don't confess, they're not going to be able to convict you for robbery. They're only going to be able to sentence you guys for trespassing for one year each. So we can model this using something called the payoff matrix. Um, and again, what, what we wanna know here is what would we do if we wanna minimize the amount of time we're gonna spend in jail? Confess or stay quiet? That is the question. So if we take a look at player A in green here, right? And we're looking at the columns here. Uh, same situation, only now we're modeling it in this matrix, right? So if you confess, your two options are go home with the zero here or spend two years in jail. Versus if you stay quiet, you could spend one year in jail or you could spend 10 years in jail. And then if we look at player B here in red, right, um, if they confess, they have those same options, right? They're going to spend two years in jail if, uh, if their partner confesses or zero if their partner stays quiet, right? If they stay quiet, again, 10 years in jail if their partner confesses. Uh, versus a one year if their partner stays quiet. So here's some terminology that we really need to know. Um, players or the agents participating in the game. Um, I have date here, but we're going to say that's you and your friend. Um, for other games, it could be your date. Strategies, actions that each player may take under any possible circumstance. Um, outcomes, the various possible results of the game. Uh, for each represented in a cell in this pay payoff matrix that we've labeled. And the payoffs are the benefits that each player gets from each possible outcome of the game, right? And we're really representing this in the payoff matrix versus um, staying quiet versus confessing and what are the possibilities of happening. So there was a movie on John Nash um, who came up with a lot of these things. Um, it really focused on him having schizophrenia, but uh, he was a very well-regarded mathematician. And we're going to talk about something called the Nash Equilibrium here. Um, its definition is a stable state of a system involving the interaction of different participants in which no participant can gain by a unilateral change of strategy if the strategies of the others remain unchanged. So here's another way to think about it. So um, it's a law that no one would want to break, even if uh, we were in the absence of laws or police in society. So in other words, you're playing your best response to what your opponent is doing. Um, you're doing what's best for you based on what's happening with your opponent. So let's take a look at this. Um, and this is one of the strategies here. Um, a way to define this is that in each row, we're going to attach um, a dash to all the second components that are maximal in the row. And then in each column, we're going to attach a dash to all the first components uh, that are maximal in each column. And then the ones that have the two dashes um, in a Nash equilibria, that's, that's the optimal solution. So if we do the first one, right, and we just think about the rows here, um, Oh, I'm sorry, we're thinking about, yeah, we're thinking about the rows. For the second component, between negative 2 and negative 10, negative 2 is going to be the larger number. And then between 0 and negative 1, 0 is the larger number. 
So in essence, we'd rather spend two years in jail than 10, and we'd rather spend no time in jail versus one year. Doing this for the first components um, in each column, we're going to put a dash next to negative 2 instead of negative 10. So we'd rather spend two years in jail than 10. And then we'd rather spend zero years in jail instead of negative 1 um, for our second column here. And we'll notice that confessing is our optimal solution because it's the best possible thing for us because it, it really takes our options from spending two years in jail to possibly just going home, not knowing what our partner is doing. So, um, you know, all our lives we've kind of been taught to stay quiet <laughs> if something happens. That's the norm. But in this case, you, you actually see that that's not the optimal solution because you can get stuck spending 10 years in jail by staying quiet. Uh, so it's not the best thing for you to do if you do not know what your partner is doing. Um, so this is a sample of using a Nash equilibrium um, to figure out what's the optimal solution for you. And if you guys think about outcomes and different situations in life and you model it using this payoff matrix, it could really make it clear what's your best option, uh, a great use in life. Um, so, so here's another example that I'm going to go over pretty fast here. Uh, let, let's say it's called Battle of the Sexes. Let's say you're in a relationship and you have two choices. Um, the man prefers to go to a boxing fight and the woman prefers to go to a ballet. And here are the options. So you'll notice that the man has a payoff of one and the woman has a payoff of two for the ballet. So the woman's more happy. And it's the opposite um, if the woman goes to the fight and the man the woman and the man goes to the fight uh, the man's more happy than the woman but you'll notice that if they go both to separate events they're both unhappy because they're not with each other so if we do the payoff matrix here right we'll see that uh, one is greater than zero and two is greater than zero for the blue and then for red two is greater than zero and one is greater than zero for the red in the columns, which means if you're in a relationship, and again, this is math, <laughs> it's more optimal to do something that your partner would like um, instead of go to separate events because really it would make you happier to be together. Um, what's the impact, right? Big, uh, big image here. Prisoner's Dilemma, we're given an excellent method of studying the issues of conflict versus cooperation between individuals. It can be used as a model for economics. Uh, it's used in military strategy, zoology, and even AI, artificial intelligence. Um, so extensions, things that I'm interested in that maybe you might be interested in, there's something called a mixed strategy algorithm. So doing different strategies, certain percentages of the time, when there's no pure equilibrium strategies that exist, um, or drop e equilibrium, this is determining the expected flow of traffic in a network. Really interesting. Cooperative games, Steve Nash's equilibrium allows for deviations by every conceivable coalition. I'll give you a sample of a cooperation game, right? Um, if we think of maybe like a Nintendo Switch, which uh, I think some of my students have here, and a company like NVIDIA or the graphics card. Um, it would make sense for the Nintendo Switch to lower their price and the graphics card to lower their price because if they both lower their prices, they'll sell more units and then they both end up making more money at the end of the day. So for a Nintendo Switch, maybe the first week it might make sense to sell it for $1,000, but um, if they lower their price to two or three hundred, the company will end up making more money, and so will the graphics card company if they lower their price, so they could reach more consumers. That's a sample of uh, cooperative games. So, this, these are just some ideas here about game theory, which is an extension of probability, uh, which I think is a really interesting topic um, to think about a little bit about.